Welcome to our webinar today, What We're Reading and What's New in Fiction. It's hosted by Brian Jennings and myself, Nancy Moskowitz. Brian is head of adult services, and I am one of the adult services librarian. And we have done this twice before. In January, we did What We're Reading and What's New in Fiction, spring to 2021. And then last month, we did What We're Reading and What's New in Mystery. So this is another in that series. So let's get started um, right now. Okay. This is a short section. Um, I didn't have much in here. There's only three books, but I can hardly recommend each one of them. Okay. So first up, we have His Only Wife by Peace Adzelmedi. This book was very enjoyable. It's about a young woman in Ghana who um, agrees to become the first wife of a wealthy man. Uh, she doesn't want to be a second or third wife. She wants to be a first wife. Unfortunately, although she is the first wife, her wealthy new husband has an attachment to another woman he's not permitted to marry. So he spends most of his time with her and she becomes very unhappy. Even though she has this leisurely life, she has all the money she could want. So she decides that she's going to start a fashion business and she goes ahead and does that. And I just really enjoyed learning about the culture of Ghana, about the food. And I really liked her as a heroine. She's really plucky and a, a very admirable person. So if you enjoy reading books about exotic cultures, I would recommend this one. Okay. Next up is The Children's Blizzard by Melanie Benjamin. Melanie Benjamin has written a, a few other historical books. This one is based on a true weather event that happened in January of 1888 in the Great Plains. Out of nowhere, this horrendous blizzard bears down on the inhabitants and no one was prepared. It had been a warm day. People weren't even wearing their winter coats. And there's two sisters that the story focuses on. They're both teenagers and they're both teachers and how they both react to the blizzard and how they take care of their students becomes the uh, turning point of the book because one sister is considered a heroine and the other is a pariah. And so their lives are changed forever because of this. And unfortunately, um, there's a undercurrent here of what what is forgivable, forgiveness, redemption. And I really enjoyed how she describes the, the harrowing aspects of the blizzard, the unrelenting cold frostbite, and yet has like a very delicate story underneath of, as I said, forgiveness and redemption. And um, I would recommend this book again. It was a very um, inspiring book. Okay, next up, is The Doctor's Blackwell by Janice P. Namora. This is nonfiction. And I was telling Brian before that when I was a kid, I had I used to love to read biographies and I had read a biography of Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, the first female doctor in America. And in the ensuing years, I haven't thought much about her, but I remember the book. Um, so when I found out that this was being published, I didn't even realize that Elizabeth, the first doctor in America, had a sister, Emily, younger sister, who was the third doctor in America. And what this book does, it talks about the sisters and the incredible obstacles they faced when they decided they wanted to become doctors. And even though Elizabeth had successfully completed her medical education, got a medical degree, it didn't make it any easier for Emily. In fact, the school that Emily studied at to get her degree would not take Emily, didn't want to take any more women, even though Elizabeth was at the top of her class. So when you see the enormous obstacles they had to face to become doctors, it's just an amazing story. And I think more people should be aware of them because they paved the way for other women and they made such a difference in, in the lives of the people they touched. Okay, so that does it for what I recommend, what I've read. Now, coming soon, um, there are so many great books coming out. I just don't even know where to start, but I picked out some. I hope it's a wide enough range that somebody will find something that they're interested in. Okay, so we'll start up. First up 
is The Lost Village by Camilla Stead, which is coming out March 23rd. Now, I actually read this book because librarians, one of the perks of being a librarian is that you can read books before they're published. And I was able to read this as an electronic book before it's, before its publishing date. And the reason I wanted to read it is it just sounded so intriguing. Um, it's a creepy book, but it's, it was really uh, engrossing. It's not based on a true story or anything, but uh, a documentary film team goes to this remote village that's um, that 60 years before was found deserted. No one knows what happened to the people. No one ever saw them again. There's no trace of them. No one knows why they left. There's no reason. And 60 years before, when the police discovered the village, they found a, a maimed dead body of somebody who was tortured to death and a crying newborn. And one of the people in the film crew has a tie to this village because her grandmother used to live there, but left before the deserted village occurred. So when the film crew goes out there to take still shots and get a sense of the place, they have this feeling that they're being watched, that somebody is there. So that's the creepiness factor is there. And also the sense of all these deserted buildings and that now are falling apart. And, and there's just a very creepy, weird feeling about this book. And if you like to get scared, uh, read this book because it was scary. All right. The Night Always Comes by Willie Vlaughton. Now, if you're familiar with Willie Vlaughton, then you more, know more than I do because I hadn't heard of him. But I had read something about him and I just felt drawn to this book. He's a, a writer of the ordinary working class people, kind of like John Steinbeck or Raymond Carver. In music, he's compared to Tom Waits or Bruce Springsteen. He writes about just ordinary people who have a hard road to hoe in life. And this book talks about the elusive prize of home ownership. This woman in Portland, Oregon is trying to buy the home that she rents and she, got a, she thinks she's got a great deal on it. She has enough for the down payment. Her mother is gonna help her, but then her mother pulls out and she doesn't wanna lose this house because it's such a great bargain. And so it describes all the ways she goes to try to achieve her dream of home ownership, how to get the money. And even though this sounds very ordinary, I think it could be a book that really um, is very heartfelt and resonates with people who are trying to get by today. All right, next. Nine Lives of Rose Napolitano by Donna Friedis. This is a debut novel, novel that sounds very intriguing. Rose herself is a, a woman who has no desire to be a mother. She knows that, it's not even a question. She marries a man who is fine with that. He doesn't want kids. But after a while they've been married and he decides he wants a child. So now this is, becomes a big turning point. What is she gonna do? Is she gonna leave her marriage or is she gonna become a mother? So we see the possible nine lives she could have depending on her choice. And I think that's very intriguing. If you've ever read Life After Life by Kate Atkinson or seen the movie Sliding Doors where you see if somebody makes this choice, this is what happens. So I think this should be a really interesting book, especially women who have made choices and always wonder about what, uh, what would have worked if they had made another choice. Okay. In the Company of Killers by Brian Christie. This is another debut and it's got um, all kinds of adventure and excitement and murder and espionage. So this is really, um, an exciting book. It's an American wildlife journalist. On the side, he's a CIA agent, so he's got the, the double life. His best friend is killed, and he volunteers to catch the person who did it. But to do that, he has to infiltrate the office of a woman that he was once in love with. So this book sounds like it's got a lot going for it. Uh, the global crime, the, the setting of Africa, romance. So this looks like an exciting uh, book. It got very good reviews and must be very exciting. Okay. Find You First by Linwood Barkley. I'm sure everybody here has heard of Linwood Barkley. He's written a ton of books. He never seems to be in the top echelon of writers. 
he never seems to have um, that kind of cachet of, uh, of a Patterson or, uh, you know, people of that ilk. But he's a very good writer and he's his books are always all different. Uh, in this one, it's um, a rich gentleman named Miles Cookson is dying. Um, he's dying of a terminal illness, which he had a chance of passing on to his children. Now, he doesn't have any children that he knows, but he has he's donated his sperm and he has nine biological children that he's never met. So he tries um, in his last days to find these children to see if they'll inherit his money or his illness. At the same time, the woman who knows he's her father is trying to find him. And at the same time, someone is picking off these uh, heirs and uh, it makes for a very exciting book. So I think that's gonna be another winner for Linwood Barkley. Okay. While Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams. It's coming out in May. And I think probably a lot of you know who she is or have heard of her. She ran for governor of Georgia in 2018 and she lost. She was very involved subsequently in voter registration. And she is a published author, but not under the name Stacey Abrams. She writes romance under the name of Selena Montgomery because she wanted to keep her professional life different from her romance novelist life. Um, and this book is sort of like a John Grisham, Scott Turow, Brad Meltzer, political, legal thriller. It takes place in Washington. It, it involves a Supreme Court justice and a law clerk. And I think this looks like, with all the inside knowledge he probably has, this is probably gonna be a good one. Oh, Catherine Parr, The Sixth Wife by Alison Weir. I may be alone in this, but I wish that he had had more wives because I really enjoyed this series. Um, Catherine Parr is his sixth and final wife and she outlived Henry VIII. And she was more of a nurse because he was very, he was very sickly. He was in really bad shape um, at the end of his life. And she took good care of him. He was very happy with her. And she was a very devoted and loving wife. But when he dies, she's only in her early 30s and she wants to have more of a life. So um, rather than going into a convent or just living quietly in a castle somewhere, she wants to rekindle romance with her first love, Sir Thomas Seymour, who was the brother of Jane Seymour, who was the third wife of Henry VIII. But Thomas Seymour, who I think was kind of a rat, he has his eye on Princess Elizabeth. So we have that romance triangle there. And so she doesn't go quietly. She, she gives a, a good rousing finish to this series, so. Uh, Alison Weir has written a lot of nonfiction, so she really knows the history, and I really enjoyed all six of the books. If you want to know about Henry VIII's Six Wives, this is a good series to read. All right, next up is The Plot by Jean Hamp Corlitz. Um, if anyone saw the, the show The Undoing, uh, that was based on a, one of Jean Hamp Corlitz's books, You Should Have Known. Now this one has a great premise um, and it asks the question, is it okay to steal a book, plot of a book, if the author has never used it and is now dead? And uh, that's the dilemma facing this Jacob Finch Bonner. One of his Masters of Fine Arts students bragged to him that he had this great plot, it was a surefire winner, but he never wrote the book and now he's dead. So he borrows that plot because he hasn't had a hit book in a long time and he becomes very famous from this book. And then he gets um, some notes that somebody seems to know what he's done. So that's the suspense part. We'll see who, who, uh, who knows what he did and who wasn't wrong. I don't know, that's something you might want to think about too. Um, China by Edward Rutherford. I'm sure most of you have heard of Edward Rutherford. He writes those big doorstop novels about places. He did one on London. He did one on New York. He did one on, um, I think, Stonehenge. So he writes these great big, well-researched uh, books about a place. 
In this one, because China is thousands of years old, he starts a story in the beginning of the Middle Kingdom in 1839 and brings it up to the present day. And he does tell the story through generations of people, British, Chinese, and American. So this is another big one, 784 novel, uh, 784 pages. But if you like this kind of work, you could, this, this is going to keep you busy for weeks getting through this. But it's, he writes a good story, and I have enjoyed his books. All right, next up is Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. I often recommend Mary Kubica for people who want to read uh, what they call a good book, which is like you know, a suspenseful book. She writes domestic thrillers, and I've enjoyed all of them. I think her first one was, um, no, I don't remember the first one, but never mind. She's got a ton of them. And she wrote another one, a domestic thriller, and it talks about the disappearance of two women, and, a, and, a, and one of them had a little girl. Now the daughter is back. It's 11 years later. And where has she been and what happened to her? And that's the premise of the book. And the people are, it says here, are they prepared to find out well, what happened? And I think that's the whole idea of this book. And I think this is going to be another uh, big page turner and a big hit for her. And, um, but I would recommend any of her backlist because she's really, um, she writes a good story, very suspenseful writer. All right, this one, The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris coming out June 1st. This is a debut novel that's gotten a lot of anticipation. And it's got a very good premise, I think. Again, this uh, young editorial assistant, Nella, is the only black woman at, at this publishing company. And so she's really happy when another black woman is hired to sit in the next cubicle to her and, and they begin to be friends. But then certain things happen that lifts the other woman, Hazel. She becomes the office favorite and Nella becomes the other black girl. And so, of course, she's very disheartened by this. But what's worse is that she's getting hostile messages and she can't imagine who they're from and it's creeping her out. So this should be a very good book. And I'm glad to see more diversity in some of the authors that are coming out. There's, I think, a deliberate, um, a deliberate um, intention to have books of different ethnicities and things. So I'm very, I, I think this is a, just a good thing. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, this is, looks like a big weepy. 100 Years of Lenny and Margot by Margaret Cronin. And this is the kind of book you better have a big box of tissues with you. It's probably like a Mitch album type book, uh, something that's very sentimental and sad. On the other hand, it sounds uplifting. It's uh, in, a, in a Scotland a hospital ward. 17-year-old um, Lenny meets 83-year-old Margot, and they immediately bond despite the huge gap in their ages and they don't have much time left and they decide to create 100 paintings showcases the stories that they have lived and this is the kind of book I believe that uh, will be very uplifting and make you appreciate life while you have it and I it's this book's supposed to be funny and heartbreaking at the same time so this to me this looks like one of those books that everyone probably should read in order to appreciate what living is all about, no matter what. All right, what do we have next? Okay, The Metal Heart by Caroline Lee. Um, love stories set during World War II are very popular here at this library and I think everywhere. Um, in this case, it's, it's set on the remote Scottish island of Orkney where 500 Italian soldiers were captured, they're prisoners of war, and they're sent to Orkney to this prison camp. Well, they're used to the sunny Italian weather, warm winters, and they're not prepared. They're not dressed for it. They're not prepared mentally for it, for the harsh cold winters and they're miserable and they're freezing. And the people on the island say, well, they're prisoners of war, I don't care. Nobody does anything for them, except for two orphan sisters 
um, feel bad for them and they decide to go there and, and nurse them and, and help them and try to make their lives more bearable. But one of the sisters becomes attached to one of the um, Italian soldiers and the other sister doesn't like it. Now, this is partially based on a real story. If anyone has been to Orkney, uh, Italian soldiers were indeed sent there during World War II. And when they got there to this godforsaken island, they didn't have any place to go to church. So they were given permission to um, build a chapel. They had two metal structures that they used. And if you wanna Google it later, you see it's just beautiful and, and the inside is so intricate. And uh, it's still there, although right now you can't go visit it. And so it's sort of based on that, in that story. And, and they do talk about building the chapel there. Um, however, I don't think these orphan sisters necessarily existed. Okay. Okay, should we stay or should we go by Lionel Shriver? Lionel Shriver is one of my favorite authors. It's a woman. And what she does in her books is she takes a social issue and she puts it through the eyes of real, of real fictional characters. Uh, her last book was about phys physical fitness. And she did one on um, health insurance a problem or an issue that's today. She did also, um, we need to talk about Kevin. Now in this book, um, this couple, Kay and Cyril, their, Kay's, mother has died, Kay's father has died of Alzheimer's and they're both terrified of the toll that it takes on you. So they decide that when they reach 80, when Kay who's a little younger reaches 80, they're gonna kill themselves. Now they're in their fifties when they make this uh, pledge to each other, but now they're, 80 and they have to decide what they want to do. Should they continue to live or should they stick to their pact? And is old age worth staying around for? Um, so this sounds like a potentially beautiful story where people uh, have to make a decision about is life worth living at, at, at any age? If, if you've lost some of your strength, some of your mental capacities, is it still worth staying around for? So I'm looking forward to this. I've always liked your books and uh, I'm sure this one's gonna be just as good. Okay, as you can see here, I don't have a cover image for, for The Maze by Nelson DeMille because they haven't released it yet. So this is all they have. Um, if you've read Plum Island or any of the other Nelson DeMille, um, we have John Corey is back. He's sitting on his porch. He's again, retired. And he is asked to help solve the notorious case of the Gilgo Beach serial killer. Now, if you are aware of that, it's a true, it's a real case that's been unsolved. Uh, they found prostitutes uh, have been buried on the stretch of beach, and no one knows who did it. It's unsolved. So, in this case, they're letting uh, John Corey take a crack at it. So, let's see if he can he can figure it out, but. John Corey is a very, uh, he's a very entertaining character. He's got a lot of wise cracks and I'm sure that any of you who have read Nelson DeMille books are gonna be glad to see him back. Okay. The Maidens by Alex Michaelidis. You may remember Alex more as the author of The Silent Patient, which came out about I don't know, two, three years ago and stayed on the best seller list, at least at our library for years. Um, so finally, Alex has come out with uh, the next book. This is not a series. Uh, in this case, it takes place in Cambridge University where a woman, Mariana, is sure that this popular professor, Edward Fosca, is a murderer. And she has no proof and nobody would believe her anyway. This guy is extremely popular with everyone. He has these uh, adoring female students who gather around him, they're called the maidens. But uh, Mariana, Mariana is positive that he's a bad guy. So we'll see what lengths she goes. She becomes obsessed with finding evidence to stop him. So that sounds like the premise of a very exciting novel. That's gonna be out on June 15th. And I ordered a lot of copies, so um, I'm sure it's gonna be popular. 
Okay, next up is Morningside Heights by Joshua Henkin. Now, this book was supposed to be out a year ago, uh, I think a year ago, June, but they held it back a year, which is un not that unusual to hold it back, but to hold it back a year is unusual, I think. Um, it takes place, it's, it sounds like, um, you know, one of those New Yorker kind of books, this young female graduate student in the 1970s, goes to graduate school at Columbia. She's very ambitious, wants to become a Shakespearean scholar. Instead, she falls in love with her professor and they get married and her dreams of academic glory are lost. Now, 30 years later, she's still with her husband, but he's at the beginning of Alzheimer's and he's not the same man he was, obviously. And so at this point in her life, she's she's sort of taking inventory of what she's achieved and what her life has been. Was it as fulfilling as she once hoped her dreams were different than the reality? And I think to a lot of us who have reached a certain point in life and we um, see what we wanted to become and what we have become, I think will be very, it resonates, I know with me, um, and with people of a certain age who can look back and say, well, what happened? <laughs> okay, so that's out June 15th, 2021. Okay, this book is, sounds really interesting. It's by Marie Benedict. It's called The Personal Librarian. And it's based on his, uh, the real person, uh, Bella DaCosta Green. Uh, was hired by J.P. Morgan. He has amassed a huge collection of art and manuscripts and all sorts of books and things. And in case of any, maybe some of you have been to the Morgan Library, he's the guy who started and she was his curator. Now she became a very powerful person in, in New York society and international art world because she was the one that would make the purchasing decisions. But she has a secret that would destroy everything she's achieved and would make her, 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 her she would never work again in, in that same capacity. And the secret is that she is black. She's passing as a dark skinned Portuguese woman or Portuguese ancestry, but she does what she has to do to succeed because there's no way she would have gotten hired for this position if her true race was known. So that's what makes this book kind of heartbreaking, but also, uh, you know, having to hide your identity to succeed is a very difficult, I imagine, a very difficult life to live. So uh, this sounds really fascinating. I, I can't wait to read this one. All right, I think that's it, yeah. But I just, I do want to tell you, that was just a tiny sample of what's coming in. I think we get probably about a hundred fiction titles a month. So obviously I don't have them all on here. I just picked out a, like a, a small sample. Now, if you wanna look to our, you know, our YouTube channel, and we have posted on our YouTube channel, the last, you know, our, um, our, our genre fiction spotlights. So if you wanna take a look at that, you can go to uh, YouTube, uh, click on New City Library, and then you can see we have over 600 videos on there. So that would be a way to get this. Or if you want to email me at this address, I would be happy to send you the presentations, the slides, and you can look at them there and see what, what I didn't talk about this time that I talked about last time. And also, if you click on this link, uh, this will take you out to our website, hopefully, to see what's new. And we're gonna, if you look uh, this week, this is Friday, March uh, 5th. So I posted already the stuff that's gonna be coming out this week. And if you click on one of the titles, one of the covers, it takes you to the record so you can put it on reserve. Um, all right, and the other thing that we have on here, we have mystery, which is once a month, and we have other things. If you like fantasy, horror, and science fiction, you can click on that. Brian just did one on new nonfiction, and we get tons of new nonfiction in. So he's highlighted a few titles. And so that's also another place to look for a good read. 
Um, the other thing I want to point out is forthcoming favorites, which we have about starts with this March and then goes out to August. Uh, no, we're up to September now. And you can see what's coming out. And there's a lot of great stuff coming out. Um, some of your favorite authors will be on here. And so keep that in mind. You might be able to go right to the catalog and put a hold on it. Or another thing you can do is um, you can go to Automatically Yours, which is a program we have for West Nyack and New City patrons. Uh, I don't think we have a form online, although we, we probably will do that. Um, you can sign up and there's a choice of, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 authors. You pick 10. And then when the books are available to be uh, reserved, we will put the reserve on for you when the book is ordered. And so you'll be online. So this way you won't miss anything. Um, so I think that's... Um, that's because I, I I think that here the people who are here want to know what's coming out. You must all be great readers, and you want to know what's new. And we want to tell you what's new because it's very hard. A lot of books get lost in the shuffle, and uh, there's there's such good stuff out there that you shouldn't miss it. So please uh, try these different avenues automatically. Yours or just check our what's new. Check it every week check it every Friday to see what new fiction is coming out and also to check um, other genres if you like romance if you want if you need large print movies so that's I think one of the best features of our website is is the see what's new page and also if there's something that you don't see and you want to call it to our attention um, you can also do that um you could do it by do how do i and hold request home renewal request you can make a request for purchase we take them very seriously um unless it's something that's a very academic or scholarly book we probably will buy it um we, I, we welcome requests because we sometimes miss things and if you're interested in a book, chances are other people will be interested. So that's another way for you to um, let us know what you want. Okay. And then don't forget that with uh, reading, it's not always in paper. We have Overdrive, which uses the Libby app or Hoopla to find more books online that way. And so... I know that all of us at the library are very dedicated to service and to make sure that you have a good experience and that the library is here to serve you and that you're proud of your library and find that the library satisfies um, your reading wants and needs. So um, if you have any questions, you can contact me in my email or you can contact Brian. Um, We've had a big baby boom in the last month in our department, so we're down a few uh, staff members, including I'm, I'll be back at work after I get my second shot. But So we're a little shorthanded right now, but uh, we're still there to help. And I applaud my colleagues who come in, they show up day after day and do a great job. All Everyone in the library, I'm, I'm proud to be part of this library. Thank you.